Welcome to Become Famous Podcast, the ultimate destination for achieving fame in your industry. Join us for discussions as we uncover the strategies and secrets to becoming known, navigating cancel culture, and staying authentic. Stay tuned because here at Become Famous, the journey to fame begins now. Welcome to Become Famous for What You Do. I'm your host, Torrin, and today we are doing another solo interview to delve deep into my book, Become Famous for What You Do. Yes, I have basically studied three and a half years on fame, published this book in March, and uh, several of you have asked about going a little bit deeper into fame. And today we're going to talk about how internet fame has redefined our identity. And really, what is the fame revolution? It's that we all have a smartphone. 86% of us can go like me now. I'm doing this recording on my smartphone because there's some issues with my microphone. I am uh, ad-libbing. We can all do this from anywhere in the world. And we're competing with the world. And so at the same time, we're also competing with AI and AR friends. And in all of this, after COVID, we're so much more and more out there on doing reels and videos and grabbing attention to what it is we want to either sell or what we want to promote. And what does this really do? How has this redefined our identity? And that is really what I want to talk about today. And I think what's really interesting is that we're all pushing ourselves out into the public square on social media and we can suddenly go viral and when we suddenly go viral we can be just as famous as a hollywood star a political leader and suddenly we're thrusting ourselves into the public square and could be redefining ourselves legally as a public figure and what is a public figure and the way i define a public figure is it's emerging of who you are personally with what you offer and to make it really simple the way i like to say it is it's the yin and the yang of the public figure is number one, you are the person, but number two, you're also a product. Part of what you're selling is you. And so we didn't have to be that way before. Before we would just put the product out there, features and benefits. But now we're thrust ourselves into the middle. Like even me, I'm kind of a shy person and here I am talking about my products and services and talking about what it is I offer and sharing information and that's really what all of us have to do. And in that public figure space of being the merging with what you are and who you offer. And what I like to do is I like to tell the story of when I worked in Washington, D.C. because we were working with political leaders, right? Making them shine. I worked for Senator and making him look good, writing the press releases. And this was before social media. And, and we had some time to actually make someone look good. Now you have this real time. You got to be out there. You got to be out in front of the camera. Before we used to call it sound bites, like these short little snippets of what defines a political person. And and then I remember with the Washington Correspondents Dinner, which is the dinner where Hollywood descends upon Washington D.C. You've got a comedian that talks, and then you have like this merging of these two industries. And we would laugh when we would meet each other, we who were working behind the scenes, because we saw how similar with what we were doing to help our leaders look good and we would we would call ourselves from washington dc we were the hollywood for the uglies and then the hollywood was the hollywood for the beautiful people and uh because we were doing the same thing and and it's it's a little bit different because you're thinking of a person as the product which shifts a little bit of the mindset and i think one of the lessons from all of that is number one when you're thinking of yourself as a public figure, you have to show yourself publicly with who you are, your personality traits, part of you. And and I know that when I work with clients, they get so in that transition of shifting from being a private person to getting the mind shift of a public person to look at me like this and they go, I don't like this. I don't want to be this. I don't want to sell myself. And yet you are selling yourself. And that's really what's happened is we now no longer a store where I live in Scottsdale can't just be selling the brick and mortar. They also need an Instagram page. They need to showcase themselves into the public square because we're about 50% of Americans are doing a lot of their shopping online. It's more conservative than I had anticipated, but at the same time, we still got to be out there. We got to be out on the social media sphere. And this is not just for 
uh, people like entrepreneurs that have their own business. This is even employees. We need a grab and attention and looking at ourselves as a public figure. And so what, so like if we're thinking about it from a political standpoint, what does a politician does? He sells part of his personality, who he is, uh, is he married, his kids, what's his hobbies? You get to know a little bit about him. And I think, why is it that this is happening? It's not just that we all have a smartphone. It's not that we have AI competing. It's this deluge of all this information is coming out there and we need to grab attention of people right so you can grab an attention with entertainment with fun but and then with stories this is where storytelling has come so much in because that's what really sticks the left and the right brain oh my gosh i understand the story but what what does a story have a story has a person a hero and the hero is you the hero is you coming out there and talking about what it is you're doing. And sometimes you're not the hero of the story. You're the guide and your client is the hero, right? But a story has people in it. And this is the key thing of what, why we're in this era of being a public figure that we all need to think of ourselves as a political leader, as a musician, going out into the limelight because you are the story of your product. You are the story of your business. You are the story of what you do. And that is the change that the internet has done with us as people, is to grab people's attention is a story. And a story will have you in its role. And, and it's a hard shift because before, like when I talk to clients, I don't want to be a movie star. I don't want to be out there. I just want to push the products like I used to. Yeah, but you can't because we are, we got so much information coming in and out, in and out that the attention really is on us. We want people. We want stories. And what does a story have? Well, a story has a person. A story has obstacles. A story has, has a win. And that's why so much right now we talk about storytelling. So you are a public figure. And what does it mean to be a public figure? Well, I think the biggest change for a person is to start thinking of themselves as a product. You are a product. You're like a cereal box. You are a box. You are a book. You're going out there showcasing and people are interpreting your product and what you're offering with tying it to you, you as the person. And, and I think that is probably one of the hardest, hardest things for people to think about. And, and what I say is when you are um, a product, uh, you need help promoting your product. So like even myself, and I think this is what you learn when you're working in the political industry, like you have a politician, you've got the campaign manager if it's a political campaign, or chief of staff if it's managing it during during the times when you're not in a campaign, then you have a communications person that's really working. You're trying to figure out how to communicate the issues in a personable storytelling way. And the center of attention is always the candidate. So you are, in a sense, a candidate. You are a public figure. And what's hard about that is, I think a lot of times you get offended by how people are treating you that you need to have likes and follows, you need to have social proof, media mentions, and all these things that we didn't really have to do before. Uh, and like even today, a brick and mortar store uh, that's on the streets, like I live on Main Street, but so further down, you've got the Main Street of Scottsdale. All those stores has an Instagram page because where do you find a restaurant that you're gonna go to? You look online and you look on the ratings, right? So we are all kind of in that mentality of a public figure. You're the product and the person. And what's so interesting is companies need to think of themselves as products. And I think that's what's really hard. And I really like um, Jim Stengel. He wrote a fantastic book in the uh, mid-2000s, which is called Grow. And he was one of the, I would say he's the forefather of the sense of making products more personable right so you're seeing like even products today they have a story they maybe have a person in it uh and all of that components is to get attention to create a story so that you're going to consider buying their product and so a, a company 
company needs to be a public figure. They need to think, so they know how to market the product really well, but they need to find a story with the person. And a lot of times that's the CEO, maybe it's the other spokespeople, they'll have ambassadors that tell the story of the product. So person is a public figure, a company is a public figure. And you might think that you're an employee and you're like, ah, oh, I don't need to think about being a public figure. But you do. And that, I think, is what's really fascinating, is people don't think of themselves as a public figure. And I like what Carla Harris says from Morgan Stanley, a best-selling uh, author, an amazing woman. Uh, she talks about leadership and how we need to stand out. And so public figure is someone that kind of stands out, right? They are out there with themselves, telling the story through them. They're not hiding. They're, they're showcasing who they are. And companies today, what's interesting is they, they are having a hard time getting attention out there, right? And again, story is around the people and the employees. So I really think we're in an age right now, like for ads are not as effective, right? It's the story of the person. It's the word of mouth marketing. It is you as a person. And so as an employee, like if you are more visible and you are more known out there, people have attention to you, right? And so you are here and you're an accountant and you're more known than someone's here. When it comes to maybe cutting a job or cutting down, downsizing, they're going to remember you, even maybe you guys were equally on the same footing of competence. And it's all about being visible. So public figure, what is it? You're making yourself visible. You're telling your story through you. And it is a shift. It's a shift because social proof, the proof of who you are, showcasing who you are is important. And the same thing with companies. Companies need to tell their story. Consider the, these numbers. 92% of consumers prefer brands that frame their ads as stories. Isn't that amazing? 55% are more likely to remember a narrative over straightforward facts. And 68% admit that a brand story influences their purchasing decision. Stories. And again, who's at the center of a story? It's a person. And, uh, and it might be an animal, you know, like if you're thinking stories like the gecko, but it's about a story. And I think what I like about Donald Miller, he's one of my heroes. He does story brand, and I've really followed that quite a bit, is that story is the greatest weapon we have against combating noise because it's organizing information in such a way that people are compelled to listen. The stories have gone down from the ancients. And what I really resonate with what Donald Miller talks about is why is stories so important is because our brain from centuries, we are used to in the format of a story. And what the brain tries to do as a survival mechanism is to save calories. Doesn't want all these facts and information that they can categorize. Story is, the, is an easy way for the brain to categorize. What I say to my clients is we want to conserve the calories. We want to make a simple storyline that people can follow and then also get to the product. And what's interesting when we've shown this with clients, when we shift their uh, websites into brains uh, into brand stories their speeches into brand story and uh, and what i really mean by that is creating a story that fits the person that's standing there or the company is that people remember it more and and i and i think that is what's so important with being being a public figure and and so with being a public figure what we could also think about it in a way is being a thought leader you're as a public figure, you're coming with something new of information. You're coming with you and your distinct parts of you, what makes you unique. That is what a public figure it stands out with what they have to say. So it's really key with being a, a public figure is, and for companies, is the sense of person-centric branding. And my hero is uh, Jim Stengel from Procter & Gamble, fantastic book called Grow. And he says the counterintuitive fact is that doing the right thing in your business is doing the right thing for your business. And his transformative influence on Procter & Gamble was he created a brand ideal. He created a person-centric branding. 
This is what I like to call it. And a brand ideal is the business essential reason for being the high order benefit it brings to the world. A brand ideal of improving people's lives is the only sustainable way to recruit, unite, and inspire all stakeholders a business interacts with from employees to customers. So companies are public figures. And what was so fascinating that he did, and it was really the thing that started me, was one of the things that really fascinated me and kind of culminated in this whole fame fame idea was that what he did was he, um, under his guidance as a chief marketing officer from Procter & Gamble in 2001 to 2008, the company sales soared doubling by creating the brand purpose. Brand purpose, that's that's like more humanizing a brand, that a brand has a purpose just like a human. And what he did was he collaborated with Millard Brown uh, Optimer. He initiated a decade-long growth study, and they selected brands with the highest customer branding stories uh, from Miller Brand's Fast database. And when comparing these brands, which they dubbed the Stangle 50, uh, to the Standard & Poor, they observed a 400% return on investment. 400% return on investment. This is a purpose-driven company rooted in brand purpose ideals. And over a decade, the Stengel 50 expanded to 393% in stark contrast to S&P's 500 decline, decline to 7%. What does this really show? It shows that uh, companies are public figures. The most successful ones have a purpose. They're like a human. They have a story. And what does this all come down to is that all of society now needs to embrace themselves as an identity of a public figure product and person and then having and with the person it's really about the story of who you are and what uh i like this quote from paul pullman uh, former ceo of unilever he says what sticks to the brain has to go through the heart and i think what what a person does it's more heart-centered you see the person when you're telling a story and so that is really what um a public figure uh, does and so it's really again kind of like a person you go down to the purpose you start looking at the purpose of the company um and then the greatest success comes from real embodying the person person of a big corporation tap into the personal traits of a company right and and you're seeing that like look at coke and pepsi they have very distinct personality traits but you can see coke is happy Perhaps he's cutting edge, right? You're seeing that whole kind of component. And and what's interesting is uh, this uh, this person that I really like, his name is uh, Robert Murray, talks about the brand connectors, like recommending that companies in a different way look at it as a public figure, using the CEO that connects to the brand, right? Stories around the ties back to the brand. And that, again, is looking more from the lens of being a public figure and and that and then it can be many connectors so the one thing i always recommended when i was working in corporate was was to have many people be ambassadors that would reflect the story of the company and so companies are public figures people are public figures and what i like and i'll put this in the show notes is that you have the personal story which is the impact but the product is the market value. What's the market value of, of what you're presenting, right? The hard numbers. And then you have the soft numbers with the storytelling. Public feedback is going back and forth, getting that feedback. And that, and then public product differentiation. What's the differentiation of the product? Looking at it in much more stark contrast. What differentiates you from the other person? And then emotional engagement versus sales volume. Like, what's the emotional engagement? What's the like and the followers? And what's what's the sales volume, right? What are you what are you generating from your product of you, right? And then um, and having those metrics. And what I say is what makes it really important is, and that's what we'll talk about the next uh, episode, is what's so important in this balancing between the person and the product, knowing how to balance yourself um, into this, you know, personal story, impact versus market value, social media engagement versus sales volume, emotional engagement versus product differentiation and, and public uh, feedback versus visual uh, vis visibility optimization. So it's kind of like taking those two components. And I really think 
what's important with this and and the lesson i think the most important lesson for you to take on is that life has changed the way we have to business has changed and that we each need to have a team to help us become the public figure that we need to do so like for instance for me i have two people right now helping me with my with my sense of being a public figure going out there and and working and becoming better at communicating sharing information and putting my differentiation out there and we all need to do that and so and that's why you need a team because you as a product can't really see the product you don't have a 360 viewpoint and that's why a strategy strategist is very important people around you helping you manage your brand and help you see it from a product value standpoint versus the person and and in that how do you manage your messaging right and some people say i don't want to be personable i don't want to share of myself like that well what i always tell clients is find three to five stories that you can do that will really help you uh share your story of who you are and so i think uh that is some of the components of it and i'll and i think when you start embodying it, you'll see it. And I think this is also why it's so important. The other lesson I'd like to say with being a public figure is you're more mindful about what you say out there. The public square of social media can suddenly take you to go viral to hundreds and thousands, thousands of followers. And by understanding the risk of going out there, as well as the opportunity, but treating yourself as a public figure, you're going to have mechanisms in place that are very different from when you're just going out there as 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 a private citizen. And I would actually argue none of us are private citizens anymore. Uh, we are public personas that are out in social media. Because if you suddenly go viral, your world changes sometimes if you're prepared for it. Uh, and then sometimes we can be canceled. And it's utilizing the strategies, being prepared with a crisis communications plan, having someone around you to help you look at yourself as a product how do you actually manage yourself out there uh, but what's really important is you're always the boss of your brand and so what i like to say is you're the owner of the company so john say you're the company john is owner of the company john but john is also the ceo and john is also the product and how can you manage all those roles you can't this is why you need help and need outside perspective to utilize to bring yourself out into the marketplace um, it's not something you can do by yourself. And I think the more people you have around that you're really cognizant about who you're picking to be a part of your team is really, really key. So that is really what I wanted to talk today, that you are a public figure, that internet identity has changed your identity and your identity has changed to becoming a public figure. And what is a public figure? It is person and product. It's the yin and the yang of the public figure. You are the private citizen, the person, and but you're also product. And how do you meld those two together to be a public figure that stands for something you believe in? And really the reason why this is so important is that a person is the one that drives the story. You can have an animal, but I would say story. The, the main stories are driven by a person that goes through something. You're telling a story. And that is really what a company needs to do. You as an owner of a business, but also as an employee, standing out and telling your story so that you don't get lost in the noise. And that was it for now. Thank you so much and have a lovely day. Thank you for listening to Become Famous Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe, rate, and review our show. Your support helps us keep bringing you valuable insights on achieving fame in your industry. Keep shining and see you next time.